Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the Church of the Living God Sunday Live. This is Elder Foster coming to you live on this third day of April 2022. So thank you all for joining us, and I appreciate your support, and I pray that we be a blessing to you. Let's go ahead. We'll open up with prayer, and I'll make my announcements that I always make, and then I'll get into the lesson, because uh, we're still in Revelation, so I'll get into the lesson. I have a, a, a probably a lot to share to try to get through, which I know I won't get through it all today. So we'll definitely be doing another two part just on this second and the third chapter. So let's go ahead and open up with prayer. Once again, thank you all for joining us. Gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for blessing us and keeping us, strengthening us, leading and guiding us. I want to thank you for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace. Thank you for your understanding, Father Lord. Pray and ask, Father, uh, that you bless those that are watching, bless those that hear, Father Lord. Um, Father, just, just continue to expound the word and minister to Don the Pope today may uh, expound on your word and preach the truth and let the Holy Spirit lead them. Pray for those that are sick, for those that are traveling, pray for those that are in hospital, pray for the homeless, for those that are suffering, Father Lord. We know that thou art a God that are able to do all things. So we ask for your leading, your guidance, and your protection. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So once again, thank you all for joining. Uh, those of you that are here, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Revelation. Uh, we're going to do the second and the third chapter. Uh, today, my lesson will be entitled, We Need a Word from God. We Need a Word from God. But first, the announcement. Every um, Don't forget you can join us every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, on our prayer line every Tuesday and Thursday uh, at 6 p.m. Arizona time, uh, 8 p.m. if you're in the Midwest and 9 on the East Coast. That prayer line number is 712-432-3900. 712-432-3900. Um, then you want to press 245-826-POUND and that will put you in the prayer line. Sister Annette McAfee is the moderator of the line. So definitely come join us there. And uh, we pray that you uh, receive the, the word of God. Uh, and get your prayer requests in. We, we've seen a lot of prayers answered, a lot of life change, people getting saved. We're just thanking God just for the power of prayer. Every Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Arizona time, um, 8 p.m. if you're in the Midwest, 9 if you're in the East Coast. We have our Wednesday night Bible class. Well, I just continue following the series that I'm following that I do on Sunday Live. So come join us here on, on Facebook Sunday Live, and you can follow us as we walk through the book of Revelation. Um, every Saturday, we are on the radio. I love gospelradio.com. I do need to make an announcement. There has been some technical difficulties over the last couple of weeks uh, with the radio uh, so hopefully we'll be back up and running uh, next week. Just pray for that. You know, the enemy always attacks and things just happen. So just keep praying for us. I know we've been down for two weeks, uh, but I'm hoping uh, we'll be back up next week. Uh, I, I got to check with the owners of the station to see where we are. Um, so uh, just keep praying. And don't forget that we also have a YouTube channel where you can you can go back and catch all these lessons uh, and, and uh, follow them if, if you miss them here. So um those are announcements that I have. We are still working out here uh, to get back in building. Uh, I'm hoping by the end of April at least that we back live streaming. But we'll follow whatever the Lord leads us to do. Amen. So um, those are the announcements. So now we're going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, we're, we're going through the book of Revelation. I don't know how long we're going to be on this process. Uh, if God deters me and takes me a different way, of course, I'm going to follow whatever the Spirit uh, tells us to do. But uh, I just wanted to reteach this, just show some things there. So... We completed the first chapter. We're actually going to be at the second and the third chapter. But before I go there, I got some other things that we need to talk about that lead us up to understanding the second and the third chapter. Again, uh, I did a breakdown of all the churches, their ages, uh, uh, what age uh, that they were, what AD they were, and, and what God was saying to the churches. I want to take a different approach, but still bring back some of the things I talk about. So I hope that you can uh, bear with me as, as we go through this. So today's lesson is we need a word from God. Amen. And we hear that said a lot as in songs. We see it as, as pastors, as quotes, we need a word from God. But if the word from God is not from the word of God, then it ain't the word of God. Let me explain what I'm saying. If the word we get that we say and we're getting from God does not coincide with the word of God, then we have to check to make sure it is the word of God. Because God never contradicts himself. Amen, saints? He never contradicts himself. 
when he speaks, God never lies. He, he, uh, he cannot fail. Uh, and, 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 and if God says something, it's going to come to pass. So a lot of times we got people that are saying, this is the word from the Lord. And then you go to the scripture, it's not the word from the Lord. Isaiah 8 and 20 said, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. So if somebody's telling you they bring you the word of God and they're going against what God said and they're teaching things that are not written in the word, then you need to double check that that's not the word of God. That's just as plain as I can be with that without uh, being offensive, but I am going to say that. Just because somebody, a man or a woman, stand up and say they got the word of God. If it ain't from the word of God, it can't be the word of God. If it doesn't match with the word of God, it cannot be the word of God. God does not speak against his word. Amen? So, we need a word from God. So now, before we get into the second and third chapter of Revelation, i got a couple other scriptures I want to show you. First thing I want you to look at is that the word is powerful. That's the reason it has to be the word. The word is powerful. Amen. We don't need any tricks, any gimmicks, any, uh, I don't need to sell you no cotton from the tomb where Jesus laid, no, no piece of the shroud, no rocks, no chips off of the mouth. I don't need to do any of that stuff. I don't need to come up with no holy water, no, no sanctified water. I don't need to give you the oil that Mary Magdalene had. All I need to do is give you the word of God. And y'all better hear what this preacher saying, because a lot of folks are being fooled, and you follow these, oh, hallelujah, I'm, I'm, look here, we follow these preachers that are deceiving us, and they're trying to get us to purchase things from us that's supposed to make our Christian life better, that's supposed to make our life better with God. But if the Word of God don't make your life with God or your relationship with God better, then there is nothing that they can sell out there on the market that's going to get you closer to God. I'm just going to speak the amen to, to you. If you can't build your relationship with God by following the uncompromised word of God, then you are done with. There ain't nothing else we can do. Hallelujah. There's nothing else we can do. It's the, the word of God is powerful all by itself. Amen, saying? Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Go with me to the book of Hebrews, if you will, the fourth chapter. I'm going to read verses 12 through 16. And that's the reason I always read scriptures. And, and I can quote these scriptures by reading them because I want y'all to know they're there for themselves. And what our problem, we, we got to get back to the word. Man, we base everything off of books that people wrote. We base everything off of songs that we heard. And most of the songs ain't even honoring or glorifying God. Are we trying to come up with some quotes so we can sound intelligent? Huh? Pastor Paul said, I didn't come to you in excellency of speech or wisdom of words, but in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And the only way you're going to get that power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost is that we get back to the Holy Word. Hallelujah. All this other stuff ain't doing nothing for us. It ain't helping us. It's hindering us. It's actually keeping us farther from God. Hear what this preacher said. So here we find in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 16, it said, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. That's what it says there. Even to the dividing asunder of souls and of spirits and of joints and of marrow, it is a discerner of the thoughts and the very intent of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in the sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passing to heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Somebody hear what this preacher is saying. Hallelujah. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So let me try to explain to you what's happening here. The word is powerful all by itself. And here, in, in the fourth chapter, he was talking to the children of Israel. He was telling them, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering this rest. You seem to come short of it. He was reminding them because we got a promise of salvation. We got a promise of the millennial kingdom. We got a promise to be delivered from the wrath that God is bringing up on the world but only if we stay in the word of God. This word is powerful. You don't have to have a fake service at church, a fake healing service at church. You don't have to have a long prayer line that's wrapped around the building and pretend like you're healing all these folks. Just preach the uncompromised word. When Peter and John walked into the temple in the book of Acts and they healed that man, it's because they spoke the words of God. That Holy Ghost moved through the words of God. Just speak God's word. The word is powerful. 
It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And he's comparing it to a sword. Back in those days when they went into war, they went into war with swords and they had double-edged swords that could cut either way. And these swords were so sharp you could take a man's head off in one blow. And then the Hebrew writer is saying here, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It appears even through your spirit and your soul. When you just preach the uncompromised word and you preach it like it is, you don't have to aim it at nobody particular. You don't have to talk about no particular sin. When you speak the word of God, it'll go through and it'll cut everybody that's listening to the word of God. Hallelujah. If you're too high, it cuts you down. If you're too thick, it cuts you down. If you're too narrow, it cuts you down. It'll put everybody at the same level. But what we need to do, preacher, the people are saying they need a word from God, so we need to go back to the word of God and bring them the word of God and preach it like it is, uncompromised. And the word will get down in the hearts, it'll get down in the minds, it'll get down in the thoughts of people, and it'll convict people at the very root of their soul, at the very root of their spirit, if we just preach the word, you don't have to fabricate it, you don't have to puff it up, you don't have to do anything to it, but stand there and preach it like God gave it to you. That's what the book just said, the word of God is powerful. Dividing even to sundry the soul to the spirit, joint to mirror, it discerns the thoughts and the very intent of heart. You can be preaching the word of God. There can be people there that you never met before, and they'll think that you're talking directly to them. It ain't you. It's the word of God. Where we air it is that a lot of times we like to take the credit ourselves, and we like to act like that we don't saw them doing something, or we were there when they were there. It ain't you. It's just the word of God. Hallelujah. Many times people tell me, uh, they said, preacher, you talking directly to us today. I don't know what they've been doing. I don't know where they've been. I just preach that uncompromised word of God. And I let God do his work through the word of God. I'm not trying to be anything else. I told y'all before, I'm just a servant. And then he told me in these days, preach like Noah preached. I'm just a servant. That's all I am. I'm not bishop. I'm not elder. I'm not arch. I'm not presiding. I'm nothing. I'm just a servant that God has chosen to use for these years that I've been up on the earth to preach his word. And that's what I'm bringing to you doing. And I'm going to give you a word from God because we do need a word from God. So I'm going to give it to you in a moment here because people don't even realize we have the word of God. We just keep running from the word of God. We need a word from the Lord. Go with me, if you will, to, to, um, the book of John, the uh, sixth chapter, verses 53 through 71. I want to show you something there that Jesus did. John, uh, hallelujah. I, I, you see, I use John a lot because I, I like the way John, John spoke. John, the sixth chapter, and we're going to go to the end of that sixth chapter. We're going to go to the 53rd verse, and I'm going to read it to the 71st because i got to show you something there. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. Remember, the word is powerful. If you want to be a powerful man of God, you want to be a powerful woman of God, know this word and speak this word. Even when people get tired of hearing you, know this word and speak this word, and you'll be powerful servant of God. Hallelujah. Watch this here. Oh, he said, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. And as the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which has come down from heaven, not as your father did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. And many therefore the disciples, when they heard this saying, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that the disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now hear this, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning whom they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him by my father. From that time many of the disciples went back and walked no more with them. And then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you go also away? Then Simon Peter and answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? 
And he spake of Judas Iscariot as the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now Jesus was pointing out something. Jesus had been speaking the words to him, and they were loving Jesus when he was turning the water into wine. They were loving Jesus when he was taking two fishes and five loaves of bread and blessing that some multitudes could eat. They were loving Jesus as long as he was doing something that was appetizing their lust, appetizing their desire. But when he started preaching the uncompromised word, they got offended with it. The book said, be careful when all men men to speak well of you. And sometimes we, we judge our growth. We judge how well we're doing by how well people say. That's the reason we like those little like buttons at the end of our social media posts. That's the reason we like for people to tell us how they think we're doing because we love to hear that we're doing great. But Jesus wasn't out for that. He was just preaching the gospel. He was preaching the word that his father sent him to preach and he knew the word that he had to preach was powerful. But he also knew it was going to hurt people. And let me tell you something, men of God, women of God, people of God, the word of God is powerful, but it will also cut down to the core and it will hurt you. You say you need a word from God. Are you ready for the word from God? Hallelujah. Because the word from God is going to change your life. The word from God going to disrupt your course. The word from God going to make you uncomfortable in sin. The word from God going to make you ashamed if you're not turning from your evil way. And here Jesus was. He had been doing all these miracles in front of them. And finally he said something that just really uprooted the core of them. Hallelujah. He said, except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part in me. But they could not understand what he was speaking about. So they got offended because they thought Jesus was trying to turn them into cannibalism. They thought Jesus was trying to turn them into some occult, which they knew the law of Moses spoke against. But they couldn't accept the word of God because they could not handle hard truth. And it's the same thing with us. That's when a lot of people leave and start following different ways because the truth of the word of God offends most of us. We like this word we're hearing today that, that tells you it's okay to be married thousands of times. We like this word that we're hearing today that don't judge you because you got multiple partners. We like this word that we're hearing today that tells you to be what you feel like. You don't have to be a girl if you don't want to be a girl. You don't have to be a boy if you don't want to be. We like those words. Hallelujah. We've been passing laws to support that. Right now in Florida, they're trying to ban the word gay. Trying to ban the word. It don't take away the actions. So we like the, we say we need a word from God, but we're not ready for the word for God. We're not ready for it because I'm going to give it to you when we get to Revelation 2nd and 3rd chapter. You're going to see exactly what the word from God was. And we keep hollering we need a word from God, but we're not ready for it. Because the word from God is going to expose you for who you are. The word from God is going to be so quick and so powerful that it's going to cut down to the secret that you hid from everybody else. That's the word from God. And people don't want no word from God. The word from God won't allow you to come to church and pretend like you love people when you know you hate them. The word from God will cut down to the root of what your true hatred is, what your true nature is. People hollering they need a word from God. That's reason a lot of preachers ain't given the word from God from the pulpit because they don't want to fix things that they know need to be fixed. They don't want to preach things that they know need to be preached. We hollering we need a word from God, but we sure ain't hearing it when it comes. Because we think the word from God is that God going to bless me with a Cadillac. God going to bless me with a new home. God going to bless me with an excessive bank account. We think the word from God is that a property going to come through and tell me who my husband is, who my wife is. You not ready for the true word from God. Hallelujah. True word from God told you women to sit still and told you men to go find a wife. That's the true word from God. But we ain't ready for that because we got feet that, that's restless. We want to run and chase everything that look good. We want to go after everything that we think that we want. We want every thug in the world. But we ain't listening to the true word from God. We ain't ready for the word from God. Hallelujah. The word from God said, find you a wife. And he said, there's a difference between a wife and a maid. There's a difference between a wife and a harlot. We ain't ready for the true word for God. Hallelujah. The true word from God will get down in you and it will touch you in the soul. Hallelujah. He said, I ain't talking about eating manna like your father ate. I'm talking about eating of me. I am the living bread. I am the true water. Eat of me and drink of me. And they heard what Jesus said. They said, this is a hard saying. Who can handle it? 
And that's the truth about it. That's the reason a lot of people are struggling with their walk with Christ is because when they start, because see, we want to change, but we don't want to change and be hurt. We want to change, but we don't want to change and be offended. We want to change, but we don't want to change and be embarrassed. We want to change, but we don't want to deal with what really us. And the word from God makes you deal with what is really you. The word from God becomes that mirror and it shows you that you're not as good looking as you think you are. You're not as charming as you think you are. You're not as bright as you think you are. This is the word from the Lord. And that's what we're going to find out when we get into Revelation here. We need a word from God. We need to stop pacifying people in the pulpit. We need to stop trying to make everybody feel good about themselves. Because everything you're doing shouldn't make you feel good about yourself. Hallelujah. There's a right and there's a wrong. That's the word from God. He said, come out from among them. Be you separated from them. We're supposed to preach that uncompromised word. The word of God is powerful. When Jesus spoke to then he looked at his disciples. He said, what y'all going to go away to? And Simon Peter had to say, Lord, where are we going to go? You're the only ones with the words of life. And Jesus told them the words that I speak to you, they are life. And the words that I'm telling you today, they life. The reason a lot of people ain't got life right now because we're not looking for the true word of God. We keep saying them, but we're not looking for it. You dead and don't know you're dead. You ain't just ain't dropped down yet. You live in a life of misery because you won't accept the true word from God. And let me tell you something about the true word from God. The true word of God has no respect of person. Don't make a difference if you're black, white, tall, short, pretty, ugly, Jew agree. The true word from God will cause all to live holy and righteous in the presence of God. The word of God is powerful. Let me show you this here. Go to 2 Timothy, if you will. Uh, this will be the last point here. Then I'm going to go to my next point. Then I got one more point. We're going to jump into Revelation. Uh, 2 Timothy, if you will, the third chapter, verses 16 through 17. We need a word from the Lord. We most certainly do. We need a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to stop prophesying in the church and test the line in the church and speak the uncompromised truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And a lot of people are not free because they're not speaking the truth. There's a reason why all this sickness is dwelling in the church. The saints of God ain't supposed to be this sick. There's a reason why we sick, but we don't want to speak that. We sick because we didn't listen to his commandments. We sick because we didn't eat the things he told us to eat. We sick because we start trusting in all the things that they were teaching and not in the word of God. We broke because we didn't follow after the blessing. But people don't want to hear that. And we can't understand why we're in this predicament. Why is this happening to me? It's happening to you because you didn't follow the ways of God. That's the word from God. Hallelujah. The, the book said by the stri by his stripes we are healed. The people of God are supposed to be healed. But if we got all this sickness going on in us, we need to question whether or not we're the true people of God. That's the word from the Lord. You want to hear that? But we don't want to hear that. I'm going to tell you what's bringing all this sickness. Because we're accepting all the sins that people are doing. And it's affecting us. When Eli would not correct his son, it affected Eli. And Eli loved the Lord. And he preached the uncompromised word. But he wouldn't correct his son when they were doing wrong. And because he wouldn't correct his son, he brought death onto himself. Y'all ready to hear what this preacher telling y'all? You might not be doing some of the things I'm talking about, but you won't correct those that need to be corrected. You letting them get by. You letting them fly. And you inviting all of this evilness in your own life. That's the word from God. Hear what the preacher say. 2 Timothy, 3rd chapter, verse 16 through 17. Then from there, I'm going to go right into 2 Timothy, the 4th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Because I just want to show you that the word is powerful. But see, we don't want to talk about that. And people, the way people overcome is they say, I hate all that negativity in my life. I don't like to be around people that's always talking bad. You need to shut your mouth. You don't want to be around people that speak in truth. It ain't the bad that's bothering you. You don't want to be around people that speak in truth. And yes, I said it. That's what's wrong with us. You know there's a difference between negativity and speaking truth. Hallelujah. Truth is, I'm broke. Negativity is, oh, I'll never get out of this situation. That's negativity. Truth is, I'm a sinner. Hallelujah. And we keep getting these things mixed up because we don't know the word from God. And so everybody's trying to make the same movement that the world making when we need to be making the movement that God is making. Jesus told them, the words I'm speaking to you, they life. 
And he came, he even told him this. He, uh, he said, I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. He was coming to bring them abundant life. But he couldn't give them abundant life until he delivered them from the selfless life that they was in. Till he delivered them from the damnable life that they was in. The word of God is powerful. Talking about you can't stand people with negativity. You negative yourself. You can't stand hearing the truth. And the truth is, you ain't got it. And you can't get it until you accept that you don't have it. I'm going to show it to you here. Hallelujah. Now watch 2 Timothy here. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead as his appearing and in this kingdom. He said, preach the word. Why is he emphasizing on preach the word? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, because the time is coming, they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, huh? So we have to preach the truth, and they should turn away their ears from the truth, and should be turned on to fable, but watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of your ministry, for I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished the course. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord the righteous judge who give me in that day, but not to me only, to all those love and wait for appearing. Let me go back and show you something here. He just said all scripture is given by inspiration. Now I'm going to show you something. Everything that's written in this book don't sound positive. But all of it is given for inspiration. So the true man of God, he's going to have to go in there and bring forth things good and evil. So sometimes you're going to hear me speak some good things. Sometimes you're just going to hear me speak some plain bad things about you, truth about you. When, when, hallelujah, when, when Nathan came to David after David's sin, he came to David, just spoke the truth to David. David didn't stop and say, look, I ain't for all this negativity. Don't come with me, not the negative. Because we do that because we don't want to hear the truth. Negative things tend to bring the truth to us. You better understand what I'm telling you. When people come just tell you, I'm just going to tell you the truth. But now, ah, you're being negative. No, they're not. They're being truthful. And we, that's when I say when you're ready for the word of God. We ready for only positive thinking. We ready for only good things. We ready to hear things all oh, that's just gonna make me sleep well at night. I don't want to think about the fact that I've been sinning for 20 years. I don't want to think about the fact that I've been wrong for 30 years. Just come positive. You ain't ready for the uncompromised word of God. And that's the reason the things that are written in Revelation, the second and the third chapter, is hard for the church because we're not ready to hear that. We want to hear that we're going to be abundant. We're going to grow. We're going to build churches everywhere. We're going to have millions of people following us. We're going to have all the money in the bank. We want to hear all that stuff there. But we don't want to deal with all the filth that's going on in the church. We don't want the true word of God. You better hear what this preacher's saying. God spoke true to his people. He told the children of Israel that they were stiff-necked and uncircumcised. God wouldn't be a negative. He would be in truthful. But we can't change because we can't hear the truth. The word of God is powerful. That's what he told me. He said, all scriptures give by inspiration. It's proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correcting instruction. And the man of God has to know how to preach it for reproof, preach it for correction, preach it for instruction. The man of God that lets the word of God work through him, this is what the book says, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. When you let the word work through you like it's supposed to work through you, it'll make you perfect in every work that God called you to do. Hallelujah. We need a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's make sure it's from the Lord. Let's stop putting together something we dreamed up. Let's stop putting together something that's going to make the congregation feel good. Let's stop putting together something that we can just say, oh, this is just, this, look, we just in some hard time. Don't worry about it. God loves you all. Yes, God loves you all. But I know he said in his book that he said, repent. He said, except you repent, you shall all perish. That's the word from God. Yes, he loves you. But he certainly said you better repent. But we try to make it seem like you can just live like you want to live because God loves you. Well, then go back to John 3.16. Let's take a look at what the Lord said. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe it in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we stop right there because after that it's no longer positive. 
Here and say if I ain't telling you the truth. Oh, God loved the world. He gave his life. Oh, hallelujah. He cares about me. Go to that 17th verse and see what God started talking. Boy, he ain't talking as positive. Huh? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. For he that, the 18th verse, for he that believeth on the son has life. He that believeth not on the Son hath not life abiding in him. All of a sudden, it got negative, as we want to call it. God was speaking a lot of positive stuff. He did love you, but he sure went to the truth with it. He, you believe him, and you got life in you. But if you don't, you ain't got no life in you. Mark 16, chapter, he that believeth in his baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. The uncompromised word of God just going to speak the truth. People say, oh, we need a word from God. We certainly do. Today, we need a word from God in the pulpit. We need a word from God from the minister. We need a word from God from those workers of God. We need the word from God. I'm going to give it to you. Praise the Lord. Watch this. It's nigh us. This ain't hard to find. I'm just going to take you one place there. Uh, go Watch this here. Uh, go to Romans, the 10th chapter. I can, I can take you somewhere else. I'm just going to do this because I ain't got time. I want to get into Revelation. Go to Romans, the 10th chapter. We act like this is a hard thing. The word is not. Romans, the 10th chapter. I'm going to read verses 6 through 15. The word is right here. We struggling. We keep waiting on some big event to happen. We waiting on some angel to stand by our bedside before we get the word of God. We waiting on the lights to flick the church before we get the word of God. We looking at statues and what they call them Jesus. We waiting on it to bleed before we get the word of God. The reason you ain't seeing those things because God is not a magician. He's all powerful. He don't need to perform tricks. He perform miracles. He perform wonders. And his servants don't need to be performing tricks. Y'all may hear what this preacher say. Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 6 through 15, we find these words. It says, But the righteousness which is a faith speaketh on this wine, say not in that heart who shall ascend into heaven, that's to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall ascend into the deep, that's to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith that we preach. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, the bond or the free. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all to call upon his name. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But then he goes back. He said, now nah, nah, we're going to say he get negative, but he's just speaking truth. But then how should they call on him whom they not believe? How should they believe in him whom they have not heard? How should they hear without a preacher? And how should they preach except they be sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel and preach and publish and bring glad tidings of good things. See, we don't like this because before it sounded like, like Paul was being positive. He was saying good things. He was saying, he, he was saying, whosoever called on the Lord should be saved. So now everybody just believed that they saved. Everybody just believed they're going to the kingdom of God. Everybody believed that when they die, they're going to walk around heaven all day. I got some pride, some surprise for some of us. I got some words to tell you. Some of us ain't going to make it to the walk around heaven stage. Some some of us ain't going to never see nothing but hell fire and lake of fire. That's the word of God. I'm not going to stand at your funeral and, and preach you into heaven when I got to make sure I'm getting in there myself. I ain't going to condemn you to hell neither because every man got to be con got to be judged by God. But watch what Paul said here. This ain't hard to get. We act like it's a hard thing. It's right here in the book. You just got to open it up and read it. It's in the book. Stop reading Psalm 23 for everything and read the whole book. The word is my deed. Now there's some stuff written in this book that will shake the ground you stand on. We need a word from the Lord. And this is what he said. He said, whosoever is a call on the Lord shall be saved. That's positive thinking. But then he said, how are you going to call on something and whom you have not believed? So these people talking about they going to heaven, they don't even believe in God the Father. They talking about they going to heaven, they don't believe in His only begotten Son. This is what the book said. You want a word from God? I'm giving you the word from God. Because the book of Acts said in the fourth chapter, the 11th and 12th verse, there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Well, Paul said, I laid the foundation, that's a foundation can no man lay. For there's none other name under heaven given unto men whereby we must be saved. So now I'm giving you the word of God. It's only one way to get into God's kingdom. 
Thomas asked him in John, he said, how shall we know where you're going, Lord? If we don't know the way, how are we going to know the way? We don't know where. He said, Thomas, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm giving you the word of God. And then he said, this, no man come to the Father but by me. So you want the word of God? I'm going to give you the word of God. There ain't no heaven for you if you ain't serving the true and the living God. People say all the time, well, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. You lying. That's what you are. Because you ain't spiritual until your flesh dies. And we like to use that word because we're trying to make a separation between spiritual and religion. But you're not spiritual until your flesh die. And once you become spiritual, you're in tune with God. And if you're a devil worshiper, you're not spiritual, you still flesh. If you call it on idols, you're not spiritual, you still flesh. If you call it on your dead ancestors, you're not spiritual, you still flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spiritual. Now, y'all hear what this preacher say? You want the word of God? I'm just going to preach it like it is. And a lot of people are I'm spiritual. No, you're not. I'm just going to, no, you're not. You know why I'm saying you're not? Because the word of God said you're not. And that's preaching on my word. We other thoughts and you're being negative. No, I'm being truthful. I'm being truthful. Just because you saw a shooting star, that don't make you spiritual. Just because you read your, your zodiac sign and then you read your horoscope for the day and the day happened like you, like you read it, that doesn't make you spiritual. You're still in the flesh. You want the word from God? Here's the word from God. We're going to find out some of the things I'm saying right now. That's what Christ was saying to the church. In Revelation, the second and third chapter. So watch this here. One more, one more place. Um, so that's what he said. That said the word is not. How, how are you going to hear it except to be preached? And, and everybody think, I don't need a preacher. I'm going to get to heaven my own way. No, you're not. Now that's the word of God. No, you're not. No, you're not. And hell is real. You can't have heaven without hell. You can't have Satan without God. Both believing in the devil, but don't want to believe in God. You can't have it. That's the word right there. We need a word from the Lord. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that your 2022 is going to be the most blessed year you ever had. And when it's going to flow from the hills down to the lowers of the valley, your corn stock is going to be taller than your house. Your grape vines are going to be more fruitful than ever before. I'm not about to sit here and waste my time knowing that we still playing around with God. We still dipping our toes in and out of sin. We still calling adultery righteousness. We still calling all of the lust of the flesh righteousness. I ain't going to sit there and say it to you. I'm going to give you the uncompromised word of God. That's what we're about to get into. Watch this here, huh? Give them the word that you receive. And in the book of John again, the 6th chapter and 12th verse, John said, I wasn't a light. I came to bear witness of the light. He talked about what he received. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, he said, for I deliver unto you first of all that which also I received. Why won't we preach what we got from God? Stop trying to impress people. Stop trying to impress organizations. I'm more concerned with God being certified and impressed with, and impressed with me. We need a word from the Lord. We certainly do. And you ain't going to tell me that this is the word that they're getting. Not as long as I'm keeping. Look here. Hallelujah. We're doing all this stuff in the church. We're done saying all this good thing. We, we, we don't allow all the sin that God cast out. We don't allow it in the church. Jesus went to the temple. When he saw them thing, them people doing the same thing that Elias' sons were doing, he tore up the temple and threw them people out. Then he stood and said, it is written, my house should be called the house of prayer. That's the promise that God had with Solomon. You made it a den of thieves. Now, I'm going to give you the word of God. You want the word of God? Oh, y'all thoughts are being negative. Now, I'm going to give you the word of God. We don't make the house of God a den of thieves. Hallelujah. We don't pass that off and carry around so much as God. It, it, it's been worn off around the corner. And we ain't done nothing. The book of Jeremiah said, uh, I think it's a chapter, said the harvest is past and the summer is in and we are not saved. We don't let harvest came. We don't let summer end. We don't let spring bring us. We don't let the rain come. We don't let the sun come out and we still ain't changed. Harvest is past. Summer is in. COVID don't stuck around for two years. It's winding down. We don't went, we don't went from a bad president to another president. We don't make so many changes and we still ain't saved. Hallelujah. Y'all better hear what this preacher is saying. I'm trying to tell you something here. I'm just going to get uncomfortable by the word of God. You want a word from God? Here's the word from God. Repent. 
That's the word from God. Now let's look at it. So give what you receive. God's talking to ministers every day before they go to that pulpit. But we're trying to impress people. And instead of stepping in the spirit, we bring, look here. Uh, God talked to me every, every time I got to come on these lessons. I walk around. I just listen to what the Lord is saying. And sometimes I have things planned that I want to say. And then God gets speaking to me. He changed the whole MO of what I'm about to do. I want to get the people, uh, I want to get the people, uh, the thing that God, God gave me. When I was talking to the Lord today, I just want to make sure that the word I'm presenting is the word from you. I'm not here to draw attention to myself. I'm not here to draw glory to myself. I'm here, God, because I'm your servant, and those are your people, and you told Peter, feed the lamb. You told Peter, feed the sheep, and I want to be like Peter. I want to be like your servant. I want to feed the sheep. I don't want to come on here, and I ain't giving the word of God. Let's take a look at things. There are marriages that are messed up. There are young people that are messed up. There's killing going on. There's folks that's crazy in their mind because they're double-minded. The folks are using drugs to bury their feelings, using alcohol to bury their feelings. And then when they come to the church, all they get is the form. Give them the word. Hear what this preacher say. Hallelujah. Let's get into Revelation. I want to... I want to give you that before I got into Revelation, because I want us to understand what's happening here. So find yourself in the book of Revelation, um, the second chapter, and the third chapter, so, because we, we covered the first chapter. So you have to understand. So I gave you all that because I want to make sure we understand what's happening here. Because a lot of people like Revelation because it's mysterious. They like Revelation because they, 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 a lot of people enjoy thinking about the world being destroyed and all these things happening. They're not even looking at it for the right reason. They're not looking at it because God is getting ready to come and put an end to the enemies of the world and he's getting ready to redeem his people. We're looking at it for the wrong reason. But I want you to see that what Jesus was saying in the second and the third chapter carries a little more weight than what we've given to it. Hallelujah. We act like for some reason or another that we got a passageway with Jesus that excuse us for sin. And Hebrew, when he said, come boldly to the throne of grace, he's talking about when you're ready to repent and change your mind. But God don't want you coming before his throne pretending. Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things I ask you to do? God don't want you playing with him. Hallelujah. Judas Iscariot lost his life because he was playing with God. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. Y'all better hear what this preacher is saying. Let's get into the second chapter. Now I want you to see the meaning of what Jesus is saying. I'm going to bag it because I want to read something real quickly. Um, I'm going to go over to the first chapter of Revelation. And I'm going to read the 18th verse to the end because I want you to catch something there. Okay. Um, uh, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and death. It's interesting that he's talking about hell and death before he starts sending out the judgment of the church. So y'all hear what I'm saying? Write the things which thou seest, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest, they are the seven churches. I find it very interesting that he mentioned, I got the keys to hell and death. So I want to show y'all something real quickly here. Satan is not tormenting you with hell and death because he don't have ownership of it anymore. Christ got it. You want the word? When Jesus went down there in the grave, when he got up, he said, I got the keys of hell and death. He told him that when he got up, he went down there and he took the right of hell and death. Because it was his from the beginning. And he went and took it. And y'all better understand something. You better find out who's bringing hell on death. Because when we get into that seal and we start seeing hell on death, I want y'all to understand that these seals were not loose from Satan. These seals were loose from God. God has the keys of hell and death. So this weight, what he's saying to the church is going to carry a little bit more weight when we start getting serious about this. This ain't the devil saying what he's going to do. The revelation of Jesus Christ, all of these things happening is what God is doing, not the devil. This is not the Job incident rehappening. This is not the devil going to the throne of God and talking to God about Job. This is Jesus Christ fulfilling his revelation. And he's talking to the church. And he told Peter and them, he said, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. So I'm hoping y'all wake up right now because it's not the devil that's attacking the church. Oh, y'all better hear what I'm saying. It's the judgment of God 
falling on the non-believers. It's the judgment of God falling on those that keep playing with the word of God. The devil himself is scared of the things that he sees happening in this book. Woe unto you inhabitants of the earth because Satan has come down to you and his wrath is with them. He's afraid of what God is about to do and we better get afraid. The book of James, the second chapter in the 19th verse says, Thou believest there is one God you do well. The devils believe and they tremble. Now, if Satan is trembling at the acts of God, why are we acting like God ain't going to do nothing to us? Somebody hear what this preacher saying. So understand this. Before we get into this, understand this is the work of God. This is not the work of the devil. This is the work of God. John didn't say the revelation of Satan. He said the revelation of Jesus Christ. If I'm wrong, somebody call me out on it now. But I'm reading this book. I hope y'all reading the same thing I'm reading. Now watch this here. So this should have a different weight to it. Now he said the seven stars which you saw are the seven angels of the church. And the seven candlesticks are the seven churches. And he was talking about the churches in Asia because they were going out to preach the gospel. And people want to act like, oh, this is a completely different thing. This is the people of God that he's talking to. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I don't care if you're Church of the Living God, Church of God, Brown Street. I don't care if you're, if, 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 if you're Missouri Baptist, if you're Illinois Baptist. I don't care. He's talking to the churches. Mm -hmm. We need a word from the Lord. Let's hear the word from the Lord. Y'all with this preacher? Hear what this preacher is saying. Hallelujah. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus right. He started right into the churches. This is Christ talking to the churches. He wasn't making an idle threat. He wasn't trying to overcome the church. He wasn't, in, he wasn't infiltrating the church with sin. He was talking about what he's going to do to the church if they don't get it right. Hallelujah. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works in thy labor, in thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them and say that they are apostles or not, and have found them liars. God knows what's happening in the church. Apostle Paul said in Timothy 1 and 12, He said, For the which cause I suffer these things, nevertheless I'm not ashamed, because I know who I believe in, and I'm persuaded that God is able to keep that which I committed. Don't you stop walking with God because it seems like ain't nobody else walking with God. God knows the fake prayers. He knows the fake preachers. He knows the hypocrite in the church. He said, I heard your cries. I know how much you hate what people are doing in the church, but you keep walking with me. This is Christ giving a warning to the church. A lot of us just don't gave up because there's too many hypocrites. We don't even show up in the church anymore. There's been hypocrites since the downfall of Adam, and they're not going nowhere until the last enemy is destroyed. Don't you give up on the church because of what other people are doing in the church. He said, I know what's going on. I don't know why we think God is blinded to what mankind is doing. He knows what's going on in the church. He knows those that are greedy for filthy lucre. He knows those that are lusting after the flesh. He knows those that are deceiving and using people by the word of God. He knows what's going on in the flesh. And I'm trying to tell you this ain't the devil doing this. This is us walking away from God. And we bought these damnation on ourselves. Hallelujah. We need a word from God. Y'all hear this preaching? He said, now watch this here. And I know you're born to patient, my name's sake, and labor, and has not painted. He said, but nevertheless, I got somewhat against thee. Because this is what happened. Let me show you what happened to the church. You left the first love. This is what happened to us. We got so tired of all the fakeness we were seeing in the church that we lost our first love. We completely left it. Remember when you first came to the church, how you couldn't wait to sit in the presence of God. You couldn't wait to sing your song to the Lord. You couldn't wait to give your testimony to the Lord. Now you lost that love. And you left it. You don't study your book anymore. You don't pray and fast anymore. You so busy pointing out what people are doing wrong. You don't realize that you're not doing right anymore. And he said on to the angel of the church of Ephesus. I'm telling you these things. This is Jesus warning us. We don't let the first love. It used to be about salvation. It used to be about deliverance. Now it's about beautification. Now it's about notification. 
Now it's about self-justification. What happened to salvation? Yes, I got discouraged with all the mess I was seeing too. I got discouraged with the mess I allowed myself to get into. But I'm returning to the first love of God. Come back to God. I ain't telling you to come back to the preacher. I'm not telling you to come back to the, to the building. I'm telling you to come back to God. Because he's nigh us. And if you think that's going to be your excuse and God going to say, I know you had a drug and there were so many hypocrites living in church. I'm going to let you in heaven anyway. You better hear what he said. Nevertheless, I got someone against thee because you left your first love. Now watch what he said here. Now we want to prove, cause, uh, I'll say I'm negative, but I'm just going to read what Jesus said. If I'm negative, then Jesus is negative because he said it. So I'm just going to read it. Remember therefrom from whence thou art fallen. Repent and do the first work or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place except you repent. Now Jesus said it. If it's negative, Jesus said it. He didn't give them an excuse because of what they saw. He didn't give them a reason to keep on uh, walking away from the church to not show up and not hear the word of God. He said, I still got somewhat against thee. I know that you hate what people are doing. I know you hate all the sacrilege in the church, but I got somewhat against you. He said, except you repent, except you return. He said, I will remove your candlestick. Hear what this preacher was saying. Preacher, don't be negative. I ain't being negative. I'm being truthful. We get ready to stand before God. And God going to look at the church. Jesus is going to present a church with a spot and blemish. There's some blemishes here. He's not going to present that to God. He's going to remove the blemishes. Let me make sure you understand this. Before he hands the church over to God. Hallelujah. He's going to remove the blemish in the church. He's going to remove the sin in the church. He's going to remove the falsehood in the church. Before he hands the church over to God, he's going to make sure the church is without spot or blemish. And if you are the spot, if you are the blemish, if you are the mar, he's going to remove you. We need a word from God. Here's the word right here. Here it is. Hear what this preacher saying. Here's the word from God. Oh, it ain't coming with daisies and, and, and roses, but here's the word from God. Now, that's what Christ said to the church of Ephesus. Y'all hear what this preacher saying? He said it, so I'm going to say it. Let's read on. He said, but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which also I hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcome will I give it at the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now you're talking about the spiritual. If you were spiritual, you'd be healing the Holy Ghost right now. If you were spiritual, you'd be understanding the word of God. If you were spiritual, you wouldn't have to ask if God is speaking to you. You ain't spiritual. You might be a little spirited right now because you had too much to drink. But you ain't spiritual. I'm just going to tell you what the word of God said. Hallelujah. You hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. I understand that. He said, so if you got ear to hear, hear what the Spirit said. We better put on our listening ears. That's what he meant by he didn't have an ear to ear. He said, put on your listening ears. We hear him, but we ain't listening. And you know how that word, you can hear somebody say something, but you ain't really listening to what they say. And you have to say, could you say that again? That's because he wouldn't listen. He just said, he didn't have an ear to hear. Let him hear. That means listen. You can blame this on the devil. This is our own damnation. We went and changed laws that God set in place. We went and changed rules that God set in place. We went and moved the day of Sabbath. He talking to the church. This ain't the devil. Talking to the church. God ain't saying it because Satan's standing before him and saying, have you considered? No, no. This is Christ speaking to the church. This is his revelation. This is his revealing of what he's thinking and what he sees about the church. Somebody hear what the preacher's saying. Let me cover one more. Hallelujah. Um, Eight verse. Unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know thy blasphemy of them which say they are Jews or not, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. But be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. Now he's talking about what the devil getting ready to do to those that are faithful. But I'm trying to tell you folks that's walking in sin, that ain't the devil. That's you. 
That's your own damnation. He talking about what the devil going to do to those that stay faithful. So he said this. He said, I know that works. I know your tribulation. I know you in poverty right now. You watching everybody else around you build houses, buy cars, buy yards. They doing all of these things. They live in luxury, fire, flying on their own private plane. And you barely keeping together. God said, you not poor, you rich. Hallelujah. Hear what the preacher said. Some people are so poor, the only thing they got is money. Because Christ said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Y'all better hear what I'm talking about. He's saying, I know that, I know what's going on. I know how you're suffering. I see all those people that are doing all the wicked that they're doing. And it seems like money just flowing in left and right. He said, I know what you're going through. I know you barely ate this morning. I know you're barely keeping the bills together. I know you don't have gas to get from point A to point B. And I know that you hate those people that walk around and call themselves the children of God. Call themselves Jews. And they are not. God said, I know it. We need a word from God. We're giving y'all the word from God. Hear what the Lord is saying. Watch what he said to the church. He said, don't fear those things. Why are you spending your time worrying about who's trying to be a Hebrew Israelite? Why are you spending your time worrying about who's a Jew and who's not a Jew? Except we become a Jew from within, we are not the children of God. All that are Abraham's seed did not come from the original tribe of Israel. Y'all better hear what this preacher said. Hallelujah. Because we were grafted in. He said, stop worrying about those things. We spend so much time trying to debunk people that are wrong that we ain't preaching uncompromised word of God. I don't need to debunk nobody. I just need to preach what God told me to preach. I'm not sitting on a panel. I'm not going to argue scripture with you. We're not going to dispute where we differ at. I'm just preaching the word of God. I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I ain't got no qualms with you. I ain't got no battle with you. I ain't got no issues with you. I just want to preach the word of God. If that interrupts what you're doing, so be it. Just preaching the word of God. I'm not racing to see who can become the first bishop. I'm not racing to see who can become the highest bishop. I'm trying to save souls. And love covers a multitude of sin. I'm trying to save souls. Millions of people dropping off the face of the earth every day. And millions of those don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. I don't have time for this other foot race. I'm on the foot race of salvation. See, don't you fear none of those things. Look, the devil going to try you just because you're being faithful. Now, the devil was attacking people that being faithful. But all this other stuff, that ain't the devil, that's you. God brought these judgments. But those people that stand faithful, they truly got trials by the devil. The devil is torturing them because they're trying to live right. And the book said all to live godly shall suffer persecution. But if you ain't living godly, that ain't the devil bothering you. I'm just going to lay it like that. You want the truth? Yeah, they ought to be negative. No, they ought to be truthful. Hear what the preacher said. Watch this here. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Hallelujah. While we worried about the first death, God already talking about the second death. He ain't worried about the first death because he conquered the first death. We trying to get everything we can before we die. And God said, you worried about the wrong thing. Blessed is he that taketh part in the first resurrection on whom the second death has no power. We trying to get everything right here. You better take part in the first resurrection, which is that resurrection of Jesus Christ. Here with the preacher. I'm going to talk more about that second death as we get into Revelation. But I'm trying to lay some stuff to you. So yes, we need a word from God. So y'all hear what I'm saying. This is from Christ. Christ talking to the church. The only thing the devil was messing with was those children that were living right. He ain't messing with those folks that living wrong because he already got you. The devil didn't make you a murderer. You a murderer. He didn't make you a liar. And he ain't keeping you out there lying. He ain't keeping you out there drunk. He ain't keeping you out there high. That's your own lust. You want some word from God? That's the word of God. It, let no man say when he is tempted, the book of James, the first chapter, that I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted, this is the book of James, when he is drawn away of his own lust. And when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. And what I just tell you, who got the keys of hell and death? That ain't the devil. That ain't the devil. 
The devil didn't kill your mama. The devil didn't kill your grandma. The devil didn't kill your uncle. The devil didn't kill your child. He ain't got the key to it anymore. Death working for God. Oh, this might be too much to handle, but I'm giving it to you like the T.I. is. Hallelujah. When we get further down in Revelation, you understand where I'm coming from. See, y'all hear what this preacher is saying. So I'm going to end it here because I don't want to start another church. And so we'll pick up on this if the Lord will. We'll pick up on this Wednesday. And we're going to do another part to we need a word from God. I want y'all to see what's happening here. This second and third chapter, this is, this is, uh, this is Christ. If you got a more advanced Bible, all the words of Christ are written in red. All of this is the stuff that Christ is saying. This ain't even what John is saying. John writing what Christ said. This ain't what the devil saying. John's writing what Christ said. Christ said this to the church. So I'm going to say what Christ said. That's the only way I can make sure I'm right. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to end it here. Uh, we'll continue with part two. We need a word from God. Um, thank all of you for listening. I pray that this is a blessing to you. I don't say these things to shame you, but as my beloved brothers and sisters, I'm warning you about the words of Christ because he's talking to each and every one of us. There ain't no individual that he excluded from this. This is to everybody on the earth. Somebody hear what the preacher say. Until next time, this is Ella Foster coming to you live from Maricopa, Arizona. We are the Church of the Living God, located in Mesa, Arizona. I'm streaming from my home. Pray for me as I'm praying for you. And until we shall meet again, y'all stay blessed and stay in the Word of God. God bless you.